Well, now that the cold has broke, I thought I would do a global weather and climate report and look at what has been going on around the planet in recent days and even recent weeks. Thanks for clicking on to the 23rd edition of Vogan's Global Weather and Climate Report. This is the current temperature normally for today across the planet. And as you can see here, a significant change has taken place uh, over the past weekend. We've seen a big turnaround in uh, Western Europe. We're also starting to see a bit of a change taking place now across parts of uh, of Asia. Um, in comes the coldest there of the season for the central portion of the United States. Extremely cold conditions, uh, not you know terribly un unsurprising for the time of the year, of course, up across parts of Alaska, northwest Canada, where minus 50 has been achieved for the first time this season. And we are going to see a major plunge of bitterly cold Arctic air into the central portion of the United States. That is going to drill temperatures uh, well below freezing, possibly to the Texas Gulf Coast in the coming days. As you can see here, of course, we've got uh, some chilly air driving south over the Atlantic. And of course, in turn downstream of that, we're seeing milder get lifted north into the British Isles here. And of course, all questions are on what kind of Christmas do we see uh, for the UK, for Ireland and parts of Europe. Do we see a white Christmas or is it another disappointing year? Uh, I'll touch on that in a, in a wee while, but also I will be doing a Christmas forecast tomorrow. Um, so I wanted to take today uh, to look at the extremes that have been going on around the planet in recent times. Now, one of the changes, the reasons why we've seen a change taking place is the Mangelian Oscillation, which rotated through 6, 7, 8 into 1 during the early portion of December. That, of course, allowed the build-up of pressure across the top of the pole, and in turn, we've seen the strongest negative Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation combination since 2010, and it delivered some of the coldest air since 2010 as well. Not as bad as 2010, but nonetheless, it has been a noteworthy cold spell. There is an article getting written at the moment that will be released on my website, markboganweather.com. If you haven't already done so, just Google that, check it out. There is, of course, a December forecast, which I believe has been pretty good, actually, talking about the build-up of cold week one, uh, peak in week two, and then, of course, easing week three, which, of course, we're in week three at the moment. But it's all eyes on the pattern uh, through the second half of this week. As the cold air dumps into the United States, we're going to see more warmth building north up towards the Baffin Straits. And in turn, we're going to then see cold coming around the top of Greenland, down into the British Isles. Timing of that, where the low pressure sets up, where the boundary between warm and cold sets up is going to be critical as to who sees snow uh, in the Christmas Eve, Christmas Day and Boxing Day period. But that will all be looked at over the next day or so. But it looks as if the GFS is indicating that we may have a sniff, a chance at seeing the Manjulian Oscillation rotating, which is, it's in the warm phases at the moment. Um, you know, so it's, it's less conducive for cold in the British Isles and Western Europe, but it may rotate back in towards phases six, seven possibly even in the eight but it looks as if it's heading into a weaker state uh, so that is a uh, this is just the gfs the ecmwf is a little bit more prominent in bringing that uh, rotation right the way through into phases seven eight and one again but like i say we'll touch on that in a little while now this is the um this is the month to date so december through the first 20 days of the month and you can see here the areas of warm and cold. So it's been a, a warm December across Alaska, across the top. Uh, so, you know, northern portions of Eurasia, uh, North America, and of course, Greenland as well. And that, of course, is very reflective of the 500 millibar pattern where we've had strong high latitude blocking. And therefore, the mid latitudes of, uh, of Europe, of Asia, of kind of Western North America, at least anyway, has been significantly colder than average for um for the front run in 20 days. And I think you can see here the UK and Ireland at the very edge of the map. Let's have a quick look at Europe. And you can see here, this is the month to date so far. And I think unless we had a very mild 
uh, final, what, 10, 11 days of the month, I think, uh, you know, it would be hard to replace this colder than average with warmer than average. So I think it will be a colder than average month. And uh, there is suggestions that uh, we do get some fleeting surges of cold air coming south. But the pattern is largely Atlantic driven, i.e. we've got low pressure, we've got a trough to the west and to the northwest of the British Isles here. But what we do have is we've got a jet stream coming in from the north that is delivering the polar air. But we've also got a, a more enhanced jet stream coming in from the west and the southwest. And the two meet almost over the British Isles. And of course, that creates a real battleground for the, the pattern as we go towards the uh, the week, the upcoming Christmas weekend, of course. Looking at North America, and um, it has been, um, you know, a tale of two halves for Canada. Western portions of Canada, below average, warmer than average across the east. Uh, much of the south and eastern half of the United States has been warmer than average. That is about to change, of course. And uh, the west has been below average, but it's been a pretty cold uh, month for uh, parts of British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, as you can see here. And then, of course, as we're moving to Manitoba eastwards, it's been warmer than average, uh, much above average across the far north of North America, thanks to the high latitude blocking that's been going on. Looking at the continent of Asia and, of course, big turnaround here compared to what we've seen over the autumn season. Very, very warm. It was almost just an endless heat wave from summer through the autumn for parts of China, parts of Japan, the Koreas, but it has been brutally cold, of course, underneath that block uh, across the far north of Siberia. Uh, so we've seen really brutally cold temperatures through Kazakhstan. Uh, parts of the, I was going to say parts of the Middle East, but it's a little bit further. Uh, so Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, uh, through Mongolia, uh, much of China has been below normal, as you can see here, India. And Pakistan, interestingly enough, after a cool summer, has actually warmed up here. And it's been a, a fairly mild uh, overall month for uh, for India and for Pakistan, as you can see here. But really, it's um, all eyes on North America as we go through the next um, wee while or so. What we've got is we've got, of course, uh, a buildup of pressure across the northwest that is going to release the cold uh, polar express into the central portion of the United States and spreading eastwards. So I'm going to show you here first and foremost the GFS um, surface chart here. And what goes on here is you can see as we progress through, in fact it helps if we get back to the right chart doesn't it? So we've got an area of low pressure if you notice here disturbed weather across the southeast. It's this feature here that um, releases the cold air that's bottled up to the north. So we've got a buildup of cold Arctic air across western portions of Canada. As this area of low pressure slides east, it is going to deepen big time. And as you can see here, look at the squeeze in the pressure field as it crosses over the, the Rocky Mountains here. Then it enters into the Texas uh, panhandle. Look at the, the buildup of, of pressure uh, at the surface behind this feature. So we're going to lay the, the track, so to speak, for the Polar Express, the Siberian Express, to run southwards. Polar Express as opposed to the Siberian Express. It's not a cross-polar flow, of course. It's coming straight out of Canada and out of Alaska. But look at this here. As that feature then uh, ingests mild uh, Caribbean moist air getting injected north, we've got, of course, extremely cold dry air coming in on the backside that is going to make this system uh, a, a major cyclone uh, producing um, you know, heavy snowfall uh, and the main aspect is going to be the temperature drop and the 50 to 60 mile per hour winds. Remember this is a very very flat portion of the country here and therefore we could have some really extreme conditions driving right down the, the, the spine of the plains into the midwest here. Look at the squeeze in the isobars indicating that these winds are going to be really howling folks. And of course, you've got an area of high pressure sitting over in northwest North Dakota. So we've got this just direct discharge of bitterly cold polar air that drives all the way down into the southeastern half of the country. Now, if you notice here off the ensemble here, so let's go back to the United States version here. 
and uh, I'll show you um, exactly what's going on here. If we can get to the right chart, that is, and you can see here the two meter temperature anomaly chart uh, as we progress through the period here. So as we play through the loop, of course, this is uh, for Wednesday, um, tomorrow, of course, and then of course there is the release of cold air, extreme cold. That is one very potent frontal system here. We are going to see. Uh, extreme temperature drops here and within a very very short distance we could have mild to warm conditions versus extremely cold conditions here and um, you know there's going to be many many houses that are going to have their windows rattling with these howling winds that come along and you're just going to get smacked in the face by a blast of polar air so this is one of those extreme events where you've got a potent arctic frontal system that just wipes out any mild conditions and just you're plunged into the freezer so this is going to be one heck of a noteworthy arctic outbreak here and then it looks as if the modeling starts to kind of wash that cold out as you can see here according to gfs um by the time we reach the uh, the period run in the run-up to, to new year so pretty extreme stuff very interesting stuff and certainly we'll, I'll keep you posted with regards to what's going on with this one here uh, over the next uh, several days here. Japan has been an interesting one. So at the very end of, of November, which isn't really that long ago, we had temperatures record breaking warm. So parts of Japan, this was a tweet here, um, parts of Japan had the warmest ever temperature measured after November 29th. Haman, Hamada had a high of 26.6 today, making it the warmest day on record for so late in the season. And as you can see here, several spots recorded the warmest temperature ever recorded. We also had an interesting pressure difference of 106 millibars between a, a 1064 high over the heart of Asia versus a, a 958 millibar low. Uh, that looks like uh, kind of east coast of China, actually. Uh, so pretty extreme stuff. So we go from extreme warmth to all of a sudden extreme cold. And the snow has been really building up, by the way, in parts of, uh, of Japan as well. So a major flip in the pattern here. Record cold, record snow. Temperatures down to minus 24 in parts of Japan in the last 24 to 36 hours. But you can see here... Uh, we've been really seeing the snow depth build 3.7 uh, feet, uh, winds in excess of 122 kilometers an hour, 4.2 feet of snow here, blizzard conditions, and uh, you know it's it's a record pace. Some of the snow that's been building up here, uh, so very very interesting. Um, how extreme we've went from record warm to record cold to record breaking snowfall as the Siberian Express has swept east and southeast. And it's not been just um, Japan or, or even the Koreas, but parts of China has been seeing some extreme cold as well. In recent days, temperatures in northernmost parts of China has remained below minus 40. And the lowest temperature in the AWS um, in the far north temperatures remain between minus 45 and minus 46 among the big cities the lowest temperature has been harbin and chang chang chung minus 25.8 minus 22.5 respectively so extreme cold in parts of asia but we are starting to see a turnaround take place breaking news here terry goose rabbit kettle northwest territories the minus 50 for the first time this season as you can see here as well for northwest canada and of course that is going to be heading southbound over the next few days here uh, so very very impressive stuff indeed this is alaska minus 57 or minus 49 celsius i think or i think it was minus 49 minus 50 celsius in parts of alaska and of course that is all going to be getting released south in the coming days so looking at the CFS V2 here, this is uh, the United States. So week one, we've got, of course, the release of extreme cold coming south. But then notice here the CFS V2 sees a turnaround. How extreme that turnaround is remains to be seen, but it looks as if 
it has a fairly warm outlook in the longer term. Looking at Europe here, and you can see here that uh, 